let's talk about this. Let's take, you have been coming here with the hair, maybe 11 o'clock. Every Wednesday you are praying three hours. What do you think will happen to you? Let's talk about it. You are coming here with her. She has got prayer points. Let's pray. Let's pray. And you mean business. Three hours. Full three hours. What do you think will happen to you? The reason why many things are not happening, we don't pray. Because this is a spiritual warfare. This one. It's a spiritual warfare. If you want to succeed in life, you must be very prayerful. I'm sure you're hearing me. I'm just saying it again. Let's take 11 o'clock because the problem is you are doing things like you are doing it for her. You don't make use of the opportunity. When she come here, you look at her and say, hey? and you forget that when you pray, you are not praying to her, you are praying to God. So let's take, you are becoming faithful from now, the whole month. You have got three hours full that you pray in the church, a house of prayer, and you are praying. What do you think will happen to you? Do you think you won't hear God? Automatically, God will speak with you. Because in the church, that's the place where when you pray, 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 automatically there is no, nothing that is affecting your ear. Everybody's praying. But at home, when you are praying, the phone can ring. Another problem can come. So let's take, you are here, you are faithful. And you are coming to church. And you say, I don't care. Pastor put that one. She's a woman, but I don't mind. I'm here in the church. You pray your heart out. And then from there you realize that your standard of prayer will go up. When you, are, when, you, when you are home, you pray two hours, four hours. You find some place, you pray, you mean business. I wish you people from now on, you must really pray. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Tell everybody you must really pray. A church is a battleground. A church is a battleground. It's a place where you pray you fight Satan. When you come out from here, you have to be a different person. God has to empower you for the next time when you come here. Like you are here now. There is Sunday. God will empower you for this Sunday that is coming. Again, you are empowered again. You are empowered. I'm sure you're hearing me. But look here. Look. If you come to church like this, you pray, 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 pray. You forget Everybody's praying here. No phone call. No one. You are serious. What will happen? You hear God speaking with you. Because we are in a church where there are angels. Where there is Holy Spirit. Now you begin to sense what we are sensing. Now you begin to hear what we are hearing. Because you are here. But most of the time when we come to church, you'll be looking at this one. Sometimes you'll be... By the time of prayer you are developing your own strategy of looking at others who are praying. And this affects you. I'm sure you're hearing me. How many of you are going to pray a lot from now? Can you stand up if you're going to pray a lot? A prayer lot. I'll tell you what you can do. I'll tell you. Look here, prayer builds your focus. You need to know that. Prayer builds your focus. And you can't see a vision if you're not focused. You can't see a vision if you're not focused. Every vision that any man of God sees, it moves very fast. So there are many visions that are passing very fast in you. You can't see them because you're not focused. So prayer now establishes you to be able to see something that is passing and you're able to identify. Prayer is so good for you. It just put you, I mean, something in front of you, you're able to see it. And then also prayer prepare you for the assignment ahead. We don't pray to get things. We don't pray to get things. 
we pray to be prepared. When you are praying, pray. Your prayer is not the one that makes you to be like this. That's why the way you are like this now. And you can't change your situation. So prayer prepare you. If you move forward in the spirit and, and you don't pray, it's easy for you to be attacked and go back to zero. It's easy. If you rush forward and you don't pray, it's easy that you can be attacked and come back to zero. So I want people to know that prayer prepares you. There are things that are coming out when you are praying. You are being, I mean, channeled. There are things that are being cut off in prayer. Go that I pray this way. When you are, before you pray, I mean, you can do it today. When I say we are going to pray like now, I want to give you a time to pray. Only two minutes. You pray how you pray. You hear it's going to help you. The first thing that you need to pray, you don't need to rush prayer. You need to keep quiet. You just need to keep quiet and check yourself. You check your relationship. That's the first thing. You don't just talk, hey, what the Bible says. Hey, what the Bible says. No. You check your relationship. I'm a Christian. And when I'm kneeling down here, I mean business. If your relationship is not right, don't pray. Go back and confess. I'm sure you hear me. If your relationship, don't pray. God hates a prayer. He condemns a prayer of a sinner. So you check yourself. You check yourself. When you see now that you are fine, praise him. Praise him. Go to him. Praise him. You are, you, are, you are declaring him how he is. Because you are coming to him. Even Jesus say, say, hallowed be thy name. Your name is so wonderful. Praise him. If you realize that you are praising him now, you are praising him now, you'll begin to hear the presence. The problem is we talk too much before we hear his presence. That's the make mistakes. Okay, let's just lift up our heads. We want to go to him. Can, can we keep quiet? We check ourselves. Are we Christians? Are we Christians? That question must always be in there. The, the, that's where rises meditation. If, if if you are, you are in the position of prayer, if or the attitude of prayer, if and there is no scripture that rises, there is a sin. Automatically, it means you don't have time. When you are lifting up your hands, you can hear now as you are quiet. Amen. Whether you are Christian or not. Okay, you are going to do two things. As you find you are Christian, praise Him until you hear. Now you'll be able to talk while you are praying, while you are here. But first of all, you praise him. When you find you are not a Christian, there's something. Confess it. I'm sure you're hearing me now. Amen. Huh? Amen. Are you ready to do that? Amen. Just lift up your hands. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, help us today. As you're lifting up your hands, another one will be praising, another one will be confessing. And when you, feel, when you begin to feel the presence of God, that's where now after confession, you praise him also. And after that confession, when now this one is praying, the later thing, you'll be thanking him. After you've spoken whatever, you'll be thanking him. Now you can pray now. You can pray. You can pray praising or confession. Some of you are doing confession. Others are. Let me hear. Pray louder. Pray louder. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus.
Yes, Jesus. Another one is confessing. Another one is praising. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Listen. If we carry on doing this, I'm telling you, the church will never be the same. Because the moment when you kneel down, you close your eyes, you are in the attitude of prayer. You keep quiet. You must fear God. Remember, it's not prayer of food. We just say, thank you, Lord, I want to eat. And you are eating. You are pr approaching God. God is everywhere. He's also looking at you. When the moment when you kneel down there, he's looking at you. This is what you can do at home. You will see the need of coming here and pray for three hours. You will see the need of coming here even before. You come here four or five hours, you are praying here. There's no need now because your attitude of prayer has been affected. Your attitude is important. When you come here, you kneel down at home there. You want to sleep. You kneel down before your bed. You spend some time checking yourself. When this conviction of showing you a child of God began to praise him, began to praise him. Because what will happen to you, the scriptures will rise in you. The scripture will rise. If now we make prayers where there's no scriptures, those are no prayers. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. So I believe, let's have, you know, that attitude. That attitude will help us to fear God. You know, we are in a level where fearing God is no longer there. But if now you just kneel down there, you're quiet. Okay, if you see that, no, you don't understand what is happening now. Don't just pray. Worship him. Worship him so that you understand yourself. Because worship brings understanding of yourself to him. It brings, it checks your relationship with him. Now, when you find your relationship now, that's why you are kneeling down there. Oh, there's something I didn't speak right, Lord. I'm sorry. I, I confess this. I didn't speak it right. I'm, I'm forgiving that one. Forgive me too, oh Lord. And from there, when you hear it's gone, praise now. Praise is now. Praise is now. Now you'll find, you read the Bible, you'll find praises. You'll find praises now. Now your prayer will be directed by the word of God. Before you utter, I want power, I want power, I want power. For what? Already now you are in a position of power. You are in his presence. If you are in his presence, you are in a position of power. What you need is to be having attitude. I don't know if you're hearing me. That attitude will help you. Even when somebody say, hey, you know, God is not working, you'll feel it. Hey, you fear God. Because automatically you start to sense God and fear him. You know what we need to do now is to bring back the glory. To do it, to bring back the glory. Remember by the time of the Israelites, when they said they want to see Moses, what happened? They want to see God. God allowed it, but look when the glory came to the mountain. Everybody say, hey, hey, hey. So now you, you present yourself. You do like that man who was a sinner. Who say, Lord, I'm a sinner. That man was convicted. I don't want even to come closer there. But many of us, we are like Pharisees. I know. I'm, we just enter there. Because we love to quote the scripture of saying, you know, I come before the throne of God with boldness to find grace and mercy. No. You can do that when you come to church. But at your home there, have a relationship with him all the time. It will work for you. Do you believe you can do that all the time? <laughs>